A commemoration of the 1981 Matola Raid, or Matola Massacre as it's sometimes known, uh, took place today in Mozambique's capital, Maputo. Also recognized was the International Day of Friendship between South Africa and Mozambique, as declared by President Samora Michel. On the 30th of January 1981, the South African National Defense Force of the then apartheid government raided the African National Congress's safe houses in Matola, which is a suburb in the outskirts of Maputo. These safe houses served as a transit point for Mkonto Esizwe Kardis. Now, during the raid, 12 MK members and one Mozambican citizen were instantly killed. Another MK member, Mduduzi Sibanyoni, later died of injuries sustained during the raid. The operation was aligned with the National Party's government strategy of destabilization in the region. Well, to talk to us a little bit more about today's commemoration, we're now joined from Maputo by the chairperson of the Freedom Park Council, Ms. Lengue Gabadeli, and also a survivor of the Matola raid, Mbulelo Musi. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Welcome to both of you. Uh, perhaps I can start uh, with you, uh, Ms. Mgabadeli. Um, it, it's a significant day on two fronts. One, the Matola raid, and also the friendship between Mozambique and South Africa. Talk to us about the importance of uh, these commemorations and this celebration. Thank you, Peter. Let me rectify something that you said earlier mm. on. They were not the National Defense Force. It was, it was, there was nothing national at that time. There was South African Defense Force. Right, right. Okay. What was important about today is the actual coming together of both the people of Mozambique and ourselves as the a Freedom Park. For us, this is a very, very important set, but yet a day that is actually sending us even more into actually interrogating how far we've come and the pain we went through and the pain that we should not hold it forever, but instead say to ourselves as a freedom path that recognizes all our heroes and our heroines, not only in South Africa, but in the entire continent, as well as outside the continent, particularly for those people who supported us. Mozambique is like, a father and a mother to us for a number of reasons, which if given time today, I'm prepared to expand on why I'm saying that. Mm. All right, so we'll chat a little bit more. Uh, we'll chat a little bit more about uh, today and, uh, as you were saying, the significance of uh, the commemoration. Um, Mr. Musi, you were there. Take us back to that time. Uh, because this was something that was carefully planned by the apartheid regime uh, with very serious consequences. Uh, thank you, Peter. Good evening to you and, and, and all your, your viewers and listeners. And um, today was, to me, as a survivor, a day of mixed feelings. Firstly, it took us down memory lane where one was reminded of the brutal killing of uh, my own comrades, my friends, with whom I shared very, very fond memories. Um, and to that extent, we went to the graveside in the morning and we were able then to be released and able to remember them which was quite an important thing for us. And I would like to make my appreciation to the Freedom Park for having accorded that opportunity to us as families to be able to say, to pay homage to the fallen ones. 
Second, we then went to the Monument and Interpretive Center where the story is being laid out in detail of what happened. And then lastly, we had a very scintillating lecture given by the ambassador. Going back to the event of that day, Peter, why I'm saying it's a day of mixed feelings for me is that that brutality was so intense that it shocked the whole world. It was at around one o'clock early hours of the morning. And maybe for, for purposes of accuracy or facts, there were three houses that were simultaneously attacked, which were not far from each other. I happened to be in one of them that was known at the time as a, a Saktu house. And when we were attacked, at that time, I thought we were the only house attacked, only to discover that actually two other houses were attacked. I only saw it when I was in hospital, after having been helped by the Cubans to be taken out of the house I was in, or actually I crawled to the, to the Cuban house together with another comrade of mine I was with, who was very injured and I was able to pull out of the house. And we went to the Cuban house, they gave us refuge, and after that took us to hospital. Only then did I discover in hospital that in fact, we were attacked in three houses simultaneously. It was a very sad day, day indeed. And such days to me, they bring it back alive. I saw my own comrades uh, with skulls cracked. I saw comrades riddled with not less than 21 bullets in their bodies. I, I saw trauma at it, its it best, but mm. I was happy today in the sense that we are beginning to say to ourselves, we dare not forget that freedom was not free, it, it came at a price. And in that sense, it was very fulfilling for me to look at the faces of the families that lost their dear ones, and I managed to survive, luckily. And I could see some mm. sense of relief that in fact they are called, accorded an opportunity to interact with their fallen loved ones. So it was a day of mixed feelings. I was very happy to see Ileano Kanyele, the Kuma family, the Manakaza family, and several others who were there who have shared pain with for the last 41 years. So in a way, it was a day that told us not to forget not only where we come from, but where we ought to go. Um, and of course, we have to go together with the Mozambicans. Peter, what was difficult at the time was that the Mozambicans were being attacked unprovoked. The actual territorial integrity and sovereignty was violated by the apartheid brutal forces. But they didn't say to us, leave away, you're putting us under threat. In fact, I remember when I was in hospital, they came in their numbers to keep us hope, messages, some brought food. So this day was saying to us, mm -hmm. we have to begin to strengthen those relations between ourselves and the people of Mozambique. And by extension, it was not only Mozambique that was being attacked at the time. The suit was attacked, 42 people were killed. Khaburon and Mumputswana, they were killed. So we ought to begin to build these people-to-people -people relations that are going to tell us where we come from, where we are, and where we ought to go together for the building of our respective countries. Mr. Gavadeli, I am listening to Mr. Musi here, and he talks about uh, the feeling that the families have, uh, partly the, the recognition of uh, their loved ones, uh, and I would imagine also the fact that it gives them some kind of peace, knowing that uh, they're being recognized and the contribution that they made. And those are the ones that have died. But I, I look at Mr. Musi and I wonder if those that survived also need to be recognized, uh, particularly in uh, a post-democratic, uh, uh, in, in a democratic South Africa where perhaps the things of the past are not read, readily in our memories. That is very true, Peter. That is very true, what Comrade Moss is saying. You, you know, the survival of Comrade Moss is so, so real. But the survival, spiritually, 
of the families that every year come here to see their loved ones where their remains are. On its own is something that I think and I believe brought each year it brings about a particular level of healing to say they are being looked after not only by the Mozambican government, but also by South African through the departments of sports, arts and culture, through our department, especially today, through our department of international relations uh, here in Mozambique, uh, particularly led by General Spiwenyanda, who is in charge of the Department of International Relations. A thing which if you have been an activist for years, you wouldn't think even himself, he, he was not even knowing that one day he will ever represent, he will represent his own country to talk about something that happens when he himself was here in Mozambique as a freedom fighter. And he himself went the following morning to find this mm. massive and necessary killing and brutality, which Comrade Musi has described beyond boundaries. Mm. And Comrade Musi is very correct. It was not happening only here. I remember very well in Botswana. As a person who comes from Clermont, we lost a boy in unnecessarily. For so when we look at what was happening today, you begin to think about the entire havoc that was caused by the apartheid regime, assisted by some people and some and by some government who never supported to see the African being seriously free, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and otherwise. And unfortunately, those people are hiding somewhere. Mm. We only know the ones which we normally and usually refer as the actions of the apartheid regime, but we don't know their friends until themselves exposed to us you find that when you see the parents, the relatives, the daughters and the brothers coming every year here, then you begin to say, no, we need to escalate these commemorations back to where these comrades were coming from. Mm -hmm. They were not born in these houses where they were killed. They were born and bred and raised by parents and by communities who were hoping, including myself, I was hoping that I will see Abu Comrade Mtukuma, I will see Abu Comrade Square coming back and many more others. But they never came back. But what the challenge that is facing us now is to escalate it. Yes, the families can continue coming here. Fortunately, the Freedom Park has accepted the responsibility and being its mandate, we can and we are in a position of escalating the whole thing down to the communities where these comrades come from. Because so many people are not having the privilege of coming to Maputo. So many people are staying in, in the street, their houses are in the streets that are named after these comrades. The more we begin to educate and to expose the people our own people, which is a very, very important pillar of community, mm. making a, the community to be aware of who this Mtu Kuma is. There's nothing as painful as to see people living in a particular street whose name is so-and-so, so-and-so square, so-and-so and so-and-so, so and, -so, and they don't All right, it looks like uh, Ms. Ngabadeli is uh, 
picture is frozen a, a little bit. Uh, Mr. Uh, Musi, can you hear me? All right, we've uh, lost uh, the signals there, Good but... Thing, uh, it will end. It will uh, end with that generation. And oh. it will be most unfortunate. It will mean their death is never recognized and will never be recognized. So this challenge is very important to take the whole thing forward and actually to ensure that generation after generation, we don't leave mm. any gap of not understanding what Comrade Musa survived from, and many more others who survived. Mr. Musi, uh, when you see a monument like uh, the Matola Monument and the Interpretive Center, um, do you think it's enough to help uh, with what uh, um, Ms. Mgabadeli is talking about, um, that it might help our society if we remember, as you said, that the struggle was not cheap, that uh, it came at a price. Do you think if there was a greater appreciation of that, that uh, some of the challenges that we're facing today may be different? It's certainly the monument and the interpretive center become symbols that make our history live across generations. They become a reference point around which our children, our children's children can know where they come from, what people went through. Mm -hmm. So to us, the fact that the Department of Arts and Culture in conjunction with the Mozambican government has been able to build that monument must serve as a lesson to other countries to follow through because the children of South Africa, the young people of South Africa, ought to have symbols like this monument and interpretive center to relate to that history. Mm. So I, I believe as a survivor that if there's anything that one wants to say is that our heritage, our legacy to which Freedom Park has become a custodian. We are happy that Freedom Park has been made to oversee the building of our heritage in Bozini, which is also linked to Madola, because you cannot separate the fact that President Samora Marshall was killed as part of the broader struggle that she was doing for the South African liberation struggle. Also, we are then also going to be dealing with the issue of Madola. Therefore, that integrated approach residing within the mandate of Freedom Park offers an opportunity for us to have a much more holistic interpretation of the heritage and legacy in a manner that can be inclusive, in a manner that can ensure that these symbols are replicated across. I think I want to leverage on what uh, the chairperson of the board of, 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 of Freedom Park or the council in saying that ours is to want to see these legacies living beyond generations to come, where our kids, our young people can, can have cross-references. Um, what stops us to begin a movement within the country, within these countries where there would have been brutalities like this, that we replicate what we have in Mozambique? and have a monument and interpretive center in Lesotho, a monument and interpretive center in Angola, a monument and interpretive center in Zimbabwe. So, so though that we build a Southern Africa that has a common past and a common destiny. And in that way then, we are really giving meaning to the fact that this interpretive center and the monument in Mozambique serves then as a propellant towards uniting Africa. By the way, we should recall that we are but one community of Southern Africa. We are about regional development and regional integration. We are about the development of Africa to, to find solutions to African problems. Now, these to me, these symbols that are beginning to be built now, they take us in a journey that transcends even far beyond our region of Southern Africa. It ought to be the 
because you will recall, Peter, and all the viewers, that our struggle was across the continent. You would find our struggle present in West Africa. You'll find our struggle present in East Africa. You'll find our struggle present in even up north in Egypt. So, so we have to ask what is being done in Mozambique through this interpretive center and the monument. Something that we can leverage to begin to build an African story about Africa. An African story about Africa defining its own destiny. So we are, as people who survived and see this monument, very excited about history in the making. All right. Mr. Mbulelo Musi, Matola Raid survivor, and uh, Ms. Mthlingiwa uh, Gabadeli, the chairperson of the Freedom Park Council. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us and uh, giving us some insights on the importance of uh, what's been happening today in Maputo, this commemoration, and celebrating the friendship between uh, Mozambique and South Africa. And as you said, uh, uh, Mr. Musi, that... Uh, these were the front lines and uh, these countries suffered and uh, they paid the price for helping South Africa's liberation. And that's perhaps something we need to reflect on a bit more uh, in our time. To both of you, thanks very much indeed for joining us tonight.